so good um, day. We're going to be talking about um, task 2.7, topic 2.7 today in calculus, which is the derivatives of four specific functions. So um, the first one is sine, and so we have this lovely curve here. And I'm just going to go ahead and zoom right into what I care about right now. We'll just focus on the first few questions here. The graph of the sine is shown below. Use toothpicks to trace the slopes of the curves. So like we can see right here, the slope right there is zero, right? We can see here the slope is also zero, right? And we can also see kind of, you know, there's the slope, it's negative. The slope over here is positive. basically we're using the toothpicks as tangent lines for us. And so we can see if we just kind of were to take that idea of the toothpick that I can lay on it and just kind of switch it over really quick to just sketching. Um, and draw little tiny tangent lines. I'm going to do the three I know that are, the four that I know that are zero here. Just kind of put tangent lines. And then if I think about this one, the slope's pretty at pi, we've got that. It's negative, it's zero, we have this. This kind of looks like right at these at the at the intersections on the x-axis, it kind of looks like one or negative one. And we can see here it's kind of a different slope there as we go try to be tangent. And here and here. Okay, so this is our basic idea. Now, as I sketch the slopes, it does just look like I'm sketching the curve. But, um, we'll see in a minute. Okay, lovely toothpicks go over there. So we'll estimate the slope at these values. Where's the slope the flattest? And that would be at pi halves, negative pi halves, negative three pi halves, and positive three pi halves. So negative three pi halves, negative pi halves, um, pi halves, and positive three pi halves, slope is zero. Is how it would go with horizontal. I should really change the colors, but that's okay. Horizontal, I can never spell horizontal. Horizon. That's probably wrong. So anyway, four zero. I'm gonna switch colors. Where is the slope the steepest? How do you know? And it's the steepest at zero. Um, two pi. Negative two pi. Steepest positive. These are positive places. And steepest negative places would be negative pi, pi, okay, and I would say that's because it looks like it's one. Place a toothpick tangent at each value to help you estimate the slope of the tangent line. So at negative five pi fourths. I, I, I'm not sure. But they told me that pi fourths over here is 0 0.707. And they told me at pi it's negative one and it's zero, it's one. Like that's what I said here. And negative one. So pi five pi, pi fourths. Oh wait, that's negative pi fourths. Do you see at these two? And maybe you can't. That it looks like that slope goes through both of them. It's kind of tangent to both places. If I could zoom in, um, let's see what I can do. 
see how it's touching at both places and so and because it's just really thick it goes over it but it looks like those two have the same slope so I'm gonna go ahead and pretend that for a minute see what happens okay um, pi halves is 0 3 pi halves is 0 negative pi halves was 0 5 pi 4, negative 5 pi 4 so let's look at that the negative pi 4 and see here these two kind of look the same okay and those so let's zoom back down and so I've kind of started to fill some things in here as I've kind of using them both in tangent but the ones I don't have filled down here are the fourths and I know it's it's a curve, right? It's it's a periodic curve, so it repeats itself. So I'm going to say 7 pi fourths, this point right here, would have the same slope as this point right here, right? Because it's repeating itself. And we guessed it was, uh, that one we were told was 7.07. .07. So let's put that over here, 7.07. .07. And then the 5 pi fourths, and the... Yeah, I'm, I'm still going to go, I think that's negative 7.07. So that's going to be my guess for the rest of them that I haven't put in there where the slope is negative. Because it's periodic. That's my reasoning. That's my justification. So now that tells me to use a colored pencil to make, to draw, to plot these points on the graph that I have up there. So I'm going to go ahead and use my red colored pencil. I'm going to take these values and plot them on my table, on my graph. And I do apologize for not quite having them in the same screen. That's pretty close. Okay. Let's see if I can just get this out of the way for a minute. A little while. That will work. Okay. So we have, I'm going to do the ones I'm certain of, negative pi is negative 1. Pi halves, negative pi halves is 0. 0 was 1. Pi halves was 0. Negative 1 at pi. Oops, sorry. Um, 3 pi halves was 0. I'm going to go ahead and put this 0 in. I know that's 0. And that appears to be 1. This appears to be 1. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Now, did anybody recognize this number? If I was to grab my calculator, and um, I'm going to use my phone and see if it's not quite so glary. Um, okay, it's not as bad as the backlit as this is. This is doesn't show up well, so we'll go ahead and use this. And I'm going to use this one as my favorite calculator for my phone because I just get to scribble with my finger. So I'm going to write the square root of 2 divided by 2. 0 0.707 and if you recall this is the value of sine at pi halves at pi fourths where they're the same and so huh and cosine too right cool so they're the same here right right there this is a positive slope so it's up here same height same negative slope so here same as that same negative same because it's negative positive huh and that looks awful familiar I'm gonna go ahead and connect it with a smooth Okay. 
Okay. And so what is that? Do you recognize it? If y is sine of x, the one that was printed on the paper is sine of x, what is my new function? Well, look at, at 0 is 1. At pi force, they're the same of radical 2 over 2. Let me go ahead and write that down. This is a graph of, this red graph is of cosine. Cool. So, make your best guess at the equation we drew. So if you go down the page, make your best guess. And I think it's cosine. Using your equation, determine the exact slope of the sine curve. So we need to know what the cosine is at pi at 3 pi fourths, which will give me the slope of the sine curve. So, or we're going to call this function sine of x, I'm just going to call it f because I have too many y's. And we think that this is, actually maybe I'll just go with call that y prime instead. That's probably better. Okay. And so in here, I'm going to put y prime. And so y prime at 3 pi fourths. Did you know you could do that? That was something I learned a couple years ago is that I could just, even though it wasn't a function, I could still say it that way. All right, so cosine at pi 3 pi fourths. So unit circle, this is pi fourths, and that's radical. They're both the same there. And then 3 pi fourths is over here. And in this quadrant, um, y is positive, but x is negative. Okay, so I think this is equal to negative radical 2 over 2, and it said exact, so it's not looking for the decimal, but if I wanted to find it, I would just put a minus sign in front of that. Nope. Just switch the order. There you go. See? Same thing. It, this is such a cool calculator. No, I have to know where any buttons are. Just use my finger. It's amazing. I just love it. It's so simple. So simple to use. Okay, so exact slope. And there we go. All right. Now we're not going to actually do the same thing with the other graphs because it takes a long time. And if we were in class, of course we would. But let's just kind of jump to our next, so the other side of this, which is now the cosine. So if my new function y is cosine and I'm looking for its derivative without, let's not really do the work. It, see how it's flattest at one, it's gonna be zero here. And this one is negative one. And this one is positive one. Okay, I'm just kind of going. So one, negative one, positive one, zero. Slope is, well, well, here, this one, negative one, zero, zero, positive one, zero. And if I were to just kind of sketch it in, just using those numbers, knowing it's curving, expecting it to wave like cosine did because that's what happened on the last one. You can see that this time y prime is not quite sine. It's, uh, I was hoping it was sine, but sine's po positive. Let's compare. So this is sine, and this is my curve. You can't see them both. Everywhere sine is positive, this is negative. Oh. So maybe negative sign, because it just looks like, got, like this original graph and this one got flipped over to make my 
new graph. Okay, I, I can take that. That seems reasonable to me. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of jump down to 9. Make your best guess. Y prime equals negative sine x. And we want 7 pi over 6. Now we're just going to do sine and then change it sine after. So what I'm going to do is find this and then make it negative, right? So at 7 pi 6, again using my unit circle, this is 0 and 2 pi, pi halves, pi, 7 pi 6 is right here. And so sine is the y coordinate. This is pi 6. Pi 6 is radical 3 over 2 comma 1 half. I just remember because y is shorter. And those are my two numbers. And so here sine is negative pi halves. Cosine is negative radical 3 over 2. So sine We've got negative, and this number becomes ne one, negative one half, and so my answer is one half. Okay, and again, I don't always draw this. I'm drawing this because I'm doing this, but I always kind of think it in my head, and like I mean, you'll see me when I'm doing talking about it. Sometimes kind of pointing and doing the inner circle, and that's what I'm trying to do is this idea in my head better to write it down, but that's what I'm doing. Okay, so the upshot is that the following things are true. If f of x equals sine of x, then f prime of x is cosine of x. If g of x equals cosine of x, then g prime is negative sine x. Those are the rules. How do you feel? Not too bad, right? That's not too bad. Seems really straightforward. Um, we're going to save the practice problems for a little later. So just for right now, let's just write that down. Okay. Pause the screen, get it done. Next. So next, we're going to kind of jump over to something else. And again, I'm going to do this on paper. But I'm going to go ahead and actually use decimals to help me do this. So if you'll take a look at the paper with me, it wants me to trace e to the x, which, you know, is hard to do, but I know it starts at 1, asymptotes over here, and then it shoots up, and all the values seem to be decimals, because at 1 it's e, which is just a little bit more than 2, and so, and it just shoots up, okay? And so it's kind of hard to talk about. So we're going to actually build a table, and then we're going to use the um, derivative function to help us. So we're going to actually do this with decimals. Okay, so I'm just going to stick it in projector mode. I'm going to add a table. Okay, and then I'm going to, down here, do f of x equals e raised to the x, okay? And then in my table, instead of y right here, I'm going to have f of x1, because now it's going to take this. And so when I plug in, according to the paper, my paper, negative 3, I get this number. So while I'm typing it, I'm going to also be recording it on my paper. So whatever the answer was, and I don't remember. So that's the idea. So I will come back to this, and I'll have a bunch of answers on it. So we're just going to go ahead and do the values for f of x. So we've got negative 3 gives me 0 
I'm going to just truncate and stop at the fourth number after my decimal. Negative 2. 0 0.1353. Negative 1. 0 0.3678. Zero. One. Yay. Positive one. That should be 2.7182. Two. Seven point three eight nine zero. And three gives me twenty point. Zero eight five five. Okay, so before we get into what the derivative is, let's take a look back at our paper. And so you'll see I've traced all these numbers. I'm going to go and just kind of look at my picture um, and clean it up a little bit. E is almost three, so it's bigger than two and almost three, and then seven. So that's way off, so it shouldn't cross the three line. There we go. Just trying to make it a little bit more accurate. Let's take two fix and see what's going on. So the tangent line at one appears to be one, and you can tell much easier with this. See how it's kind of going through this toothpick? is going through the one points okay so that appears to be one which is interesting and this appears to be it's hard to say but as i try to trace it doesn't it i mean it gets steeper as i go right the rate of change changes and gets faster and faster and faster just for um argument's sake let's just look at two of the x for just a minute Um, x, 2 raised to the x, 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, anything raised to 0 power is 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, okay? And we look at the rate of change of this, which just means I'm going to look for the change. This is plus 1, plus 2, plus 4, plus 8. The next number here is 32. Because remember, we're doubling, right? And so this is going to be plus 16. And notice that this rate of change is the same as this function. Now, this is just the change in average. This is the average rate of change. It's not the instantaneous. The instantaneous rate of change is slightly different. But we can see it's changing exponentially. This is almost in the same manner that it's changing. And e to the x is actually perfect. So I want you to see what happens when I type 5. So if we were going to use Math 8, so I'm going to just really quickly use Math 8 so we can practice it on our TIs. So I'm just going to show you that first. I should have had it open. I should type T first. Um, there we go. La -dee -da -dee -da. Let it think. So exciting. Gonna do the math eight thing. All right. So math. So I've pushed the math button. See how I've pushed the math button? Eight. So I'm gonna push the eight button, and then I get this derivative with respect to x of e second ln raised to the x, okay, so you with me, so I've arrowed over here, so math 8, I, I don't know what that is, um, and then I typed in the x, so I guess it stored it, that's probably what it's doing, second ln to get e to the x, then I put in my variable, and then I've arrowed over here. I'm going to type negative 3. 
in hand. Oh, wrong negative, sorry. Negative three. Move my face. Negative, sorry, I use minus. Okay, wait. Now, I'm gonna do a really cool trick to just get what I typed back second and enter will bring back what I typed. I'm gonna change this number to negative two. And then I'm gonna, again, second, enter, bring back what I typed, one. Hmm, another thing to keep in mind, y equals, I'm gonna get rid of this. Okay, e. And check this out. Second math. Oops, not second math. Math eight X E and x. So I'm taking the derivative at x. And what happens is to look what's cool with the graph. So before I even click enter, I want to show you on Desmos what's happening. So on Desmos, it's much easier to get any a derivative. I've named my function f, right? So over here, I'm going to just type f prime of x1. And I want you to notice that all the numbers are the same. what all the numbers are the same so on my table on my paper I'm gonna write them all down they're all the same they're exactly the same that is bizarre exactly the same which is pretty cool so they're exactly the same back to the calculator so I put my derivative in here check out if I go to um, the table set up good I go to the table and see how every single number is the same negative 3. I need to keep using the wrong negative. Negative 3. Negative 2. Negative 1. Oops. Zero. They're the same. It's a beautiful thing. And if I go to graph, there's the first one. And there's the second one, because they're the same. So what is the derivative of e to the x? Well, it turns out the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Now, natural log is weirder. So I'm actually going to do natural log here. Um, so I'm just going to change f to ln. So all the negatives are undefined. So you'll notice on your paper it goes from 1 to um, two 6. Okay. And I'm going to put some decimals in because this is strange what's happening in that picture. Isn't it bizarre? So I'm going to go ahead and try 0.5. And how about 
one third, one fourth, one fifth. Go back to point five, which is one half. One, one half. Um, I think there's a way to force these into death fractions. I don't know. Anyway, I don't know what it is, so we're not going to bother, but maybe you notice. 0 0.5. 0 0.25 is one fourth. 0 0.2 is one fifth. One third, one half. This is one sixth. So, what's happening? Well, this one is the weirdest. The rest of them are pretty straightforward and clear and more obvious. So like the E to the X thing is incredibly the, exactly the same. It's awesome. LN of X is 1 over X. But it's only when X is greater than 0. So we only get the first quadrant of E to the X. 1 over X. Okay. And that should be G. That's, they gave us names, which is great. Okay, so 1 over x. And so that's it. So the derivative of f of x is e to the x. That's the same. That's incredible. It's the only function whose rate of change is itself. ln of x is 1 over x, or the reciprocal of x, but only when x is greater than 0, because we can only take absolute values or natural logs of numbers bigger than 0. So that restriction just comes with the territory. Okay, and that's it. So the um, practice to check your understanding, I do want you to try those. There'll be a separate video for that. Have a great time.